You have to draw a line in the sand. You have to build some boundaries. Maybe I'm not the right one for him. Uh, I'm to a point where I don't want to try anymore. You are hurting yourself. This is something we see regularly. What is someone in your life fighting for? And how can you be there for them? This next question, the person says, what can I do if my husband of 20 years feels that any request I have regarding my feelings on how I felt because of his action is taking as that I am not accepting him as he is, that I'm trying to change him by giving him a way of how to do something he did differently. I'm now to the point of thinking I have lived with this for 20 years and I no longer want this kind of relationship. I'm finding myself drifting and he can't see that. I don't bug him about issues, but when I do speak up, he says he can't worry about how I feel about his actions. If he can't even see what he is doing and thinks he doesn't need to change his thought process, how are things ever going to be different? He says he won't go to a workshop because he feels that everyone is going to want to change him. Honestly, he may have already lost me. We have gone around and around the past seven years trying to fix us, and he refuses to do any work on his part. Okay. When we start trying to understand a question like that, you see, here I am finding myself analyzing it without enough information. Uh, hopefully, and if we can make this work, our, our tremendous engineer and videographer, Jesse True, is working on some things here. And if he can make the technology work, we'll get to the point where he can actually take live callers. And then I can ask you questions to understand what you mean. But right now we can't do that, so let me break it down. When I hear a question like that, I'm thinking, okay, where is the breakdown? Is it that he is just a guy that's determined to be whoever he is, whatever it is, and he doesn't care what anybody else thinks? If he's that kind of guy, okay, that tells me one thing. Or could it be that the way you're communicating to him how you feel, and you've been doing this for a while, you indicate, over a period of years, that the way you're communicating to him how you feel is being heard by him in a way where it's like, I can't do anything right, you're never going to accept me as I am, and so finally I have given up. Now, there's even a third way, which is that the way you're communicating it has been so negative, and I'm not saying it's the case, I'm just trying to look at the analyzation here of what possibly is going on here, that, that he hasn't even considered the possibility of him changing because of the fact that he feels that it's been, if you'll forgive the word, nagging. Now, I don't know which of those it is, obviously. We can't tell that from this question. And if we ever do get, and we hope we will, to the live callers, I can ask you questions to help figure that out. But let's go through those three scenarios right now very quickly. Number one, if he's saying, I, who I, I'm who I am, I'll be who I am, I don't care what you think, I don't care what you feel, then there's no magic bullet that's going to change him. If you have been compassionate and when, when you share, here's how I feel, and if you're communicating it in a way where that it truly is coming across as you talking about what you feel, as opposed to sounding like an attack on him, because sometimes if we think we're actually talking about it from my standpoint, this is what I feel, the way we say it still comes across as an attack, even though we don't realize it. Like, this is what I feel when you do that thing you do. <laughs> I'm overemphasized that, obviously. But if you do that, it's still the other person's defensive. So we would look and say, okay, we'd love to hear some of the conversations about how you tell him that, because it may be self-revealing and say, oh, oh, we can give you this little tip here just change this, this way. Now, uh, Kimberly will tell, me more, tell you more about it in a minute, but you may want to get with one of our coaches who can coach you by phone to help you understand if you think that might be a problem. Okay, now, but if, if indeed he's the one that just says, I don't care what you think, I don't care what you feel, there is no magic bullet. If you're actually doing it the way you should, the way that gets the best results or the greatest likelihood of good results, then doing more of the same is probably not gonna change anything. Somewhere along the line, he has to realize what's happening and that he is going to lose you if that's the case. Okay, let's move to the next thing. Let's suppose that, it's a, that he feels he can't do anything right because he's regularly told. He's regularly told, I feel this when you do that. I feel this when you do that. I feel this when you do that. To the point where he's thinking, I can't do anything. I just can't do anything right. Even if you're saying it the right way, there's so many of them coming at him that somewhere along the line, his self-esteem gets shot 
And then he gets angry and then he gets rigid. Like, I'm not going to let you tell me what to do. I'm not going to worry about what you think about what I do. Now understand that's a completely separate scenario than the first one where he's just being obstinate. On this one, he is too being obstinate, but not for the same reason. That's not because of his arrogance. It's because of the fact that he's finally just given up because he feels he can't meet the criteria. Even if you're saying it in wonderful ways, but you're saying it so often, his self-esteem is destroyed. Then the third way, if you just continually nag to the point where he says, I don't care anymore. That's kind of a subdivision of the, or subsection, if you will, of the one I just talked about. So what do you do? Okay, I would recommend the following. Look for things that he does right, but not too many of them. You see, I'm, I'm guessing, and I'm just guessing, I don't know you, but I'm guessing that if you indeed have told him too many things, this is how I feel when you do this, when you do that, etc., then cutting back on your communication is actually an advantageous thing to do. And so I would ask that you th consider adding in some compliments. You know something? I really like the way you do this. But you can't build a bunch of those back to back because that feels like a setup, like, oh, what's coming next? Just occasionally, when he does something, just look at him and go, you know, I probably never tell you enough, but I really appreciate how you do that. Thank you. Boom, let it go. That's all you're going to say. Move on. And if you do that for a while and really cut back on telling him how you feel about what he does, then maybe, just maybe, you could get a chance of changing this communication pattern. Now, again, if he's just totally selfish, arrogant, and obstinate, this might not help. But if indeed it's because maybe you're communicating too much, this actually could help. And certainly whatever you do, don't nag. Oh, and Kim Kimberly, uh, can you take just 60 seconds and tell them about coaches? Because I think this is a situation mm -hmm. where people sometimes can really benefit from having that conversation with the coach saying, here's what I said, here's what he said, and the coach can help them think it through. For sure. One of the things that we talk about, one of the things that we do is that we are, um, we teach 80%. We teach some foundational principles that can work in many different situations. But then there's this extra 20% at the end that's really situa situationally specific to you and your circumstance and what you are going through, whether it's personally or something that is going on in your marriage. And so that is why we have the coaching that we offer here at Marriage Helper. We have had amazing success with the people who have come through our coaching program where they have said, this has made all of the difference. I understood the concepts, but I didn't understand how to apply them in my marriage. And so we have coaching available for you as a solo spouse. If it's not a situation where your husband or your wife is wanting to do coaching with you or they can't because they're gone or you're divorcing or whatever that looks like, then our coaches will work with you as an individual and they'll teach you how you can apply these things. No matter what your spouse is doing or not doing, there are things you can do and steps you can take in order to fix your marriage. And that's huge. The other part of it is if, if you and your spouse are stuck and you're saying, we've gone to counselors, we've gone to pastors, we've gone to friends and everything has been not helpful. <laughs> mm -hmm. People have told us this can't work. They've given us bad advice, whatever it is. Our coaches also work with marriages like that over the phone, over Skype, FaceTime from anywhere in the world. They have clients from Dubai to Australia to London to all of the 50 states. And so we are, I, it might sound like I'm bragging, but we're really good at working with marriages <laughs> yeah. and our coaches are fan Fantastic. And so if you want more information about our coaching, you can give us a call. You can go online and find out more at marriagehelper.com or call us. Toll free is 866-903-0990. And we're real people who are going to answer the phone. You're not going to find an automated recording. You're going to find real people who can answer the phone and get you the information and the results, whatever you might be looking for we're going to be here for you in that. So I definitely encourage people to look into our coaching. Could you do that number a little slower? Even I know that number and I missed it. It was so fast. <laughs> I can't. So it's 866-903-0990. And if you, get, if, if you go to us at marriagehelper.com, you can see the number there to call as well. Okay. All right. Thank you.